Good day, everybody, and welcome once again to Aim High Ministries. My name is Mike, and if it is your first time here, I welcome you to our channel. And today we are talking about five reasons why God allows the enemy to attack us. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't know, we are actually concluding our four part series entitled Know Your Enemy. I'm going to put a link to the first three videos on top of the screen as well. I'm going to put a link in the description area in order that you may watch each part of the series and put it all together for your spiritual benefit. Now, if you're looking for a place where you could get scripture in its context, void of denominational influence, make sure that you subscribe right now to Aim High with Mike and Emma and hit that notification bell so that you will not miss an upload. Now, without further to do or say, let's get right into our video. Now today, as I mentioned, we are talking about five reasons why God will allow the enemy to attack us. And reason number one, God desires to reveal to us who we actually are. First Thessalonians chapter two verses four says this, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts. So Paul is basically saying that we have been entrusted with the gospel that we are proclaiming and it is God who we are seeking to please because it is him who has entrusted us with this good news. And we acknowledge that we are going to go through some stuff for the sake of the gospel because at the end of the day, it is God who tests the hearts. Job chapter 1 verses 6 to 12 says this, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. As a device to prove the point that Job is who Job claims to be. A man who desires God. A man who truly loves God regardless of his circumstances. Your faith and your love for God is oftentimes revealed through the affliction and through the trials that you may go through. And oftentimes God allows the enemy room to initiate those times of affliction in order that you may see yourself as who you actually are and that you may confirm or be convicted as it relates to who you have claimed to be before God. So reason number one, God allows the enemy into our lives at times in order to reveal to us our true character. Reason number two, God allows the enemy to attack us in order that God may give us choices. Yes, God actually desires man to choose. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 19 says this, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. In the Garden of Eden, God actually presented this to Adam and Eve. What happened first was God actually spoke his law, his desire to Adam. Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 to 17 says this, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And right afterwards, in the next chapter, God actually allows the serpent, the devil himself, 
to present his desire, his request. Genesis chapter 3 verse 4 to 5 says this, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be as gods, knowing good and evil. So what we clearly see here is God actually takes great pride and joy in revealing and giving man opportunity to make choices. We will not be able to prove our true devotion to God, our true love and affection and desire for him. If I had to force my wife to love me, beat my children into loving me, and out of that bondage that I place upon them, they respond in a way that seems as if they love me, is it really authentic love or is it something that has been forced? God is not about forcing you nor I to love him. He will present to us his desire, his will, and out of love we will choose his way. We will walk in the will of the Lord. So therefore, God presents to us exactly that. But at the same time, there are other options. There are other opportunities. It all comes down to what is within your heart. What do you desire? And depending on that, you are going to walk in the ways that seem right and that seems satisfactory to you. So reason number two, God gives man choices because true love is expressed by the choices that we make. Reason number three, God allows the enemy to attack us in order to stir up a hate within our hearts towards the works of Satan. Proverbs chapter 6 verses 16 to 19 says this, There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. So these are things that are real within our world. Men who oppose God, men who oppose righteousness, men who love evil, who chase after these things, who are filled with these type of passions, they are a byproduct of who Satan actually is. And the more we see an increased manifestation of this type of wickedness is the more we hate it and the more we are stirred up to oppose the works of the wicked one. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 says this, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So the Bible actually says the very reason why Jesus came was to destroy the works of the devil. Why? Because of sin. The devil stirs up men to sin, desire sin, desire to follow the father of lies whom is the devil. And the increased manifestation that we see within our world as it relates to sin ought to stir up a godly wrath within us to see God actually pour forth his vengeance upon all ungodliness. So reason number three, God allows the enemy to attack us so that we may be sensitive and that we may see sin and see the enemy for who he actually is and desire the more for God's kingdom to be advanced against the kingdom of darkness. Reason number four, God causes the enemy to attack us in order that God may stir up a hope and a desire and anticipation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 22 says this, If anyone has no love for the Lord, let him be accursed. Our Lord come. Now that word our Lord come comes from an Aramaic word which means Maranatha. So it's like, Lord, come. My desire is to see you and to see your glory, to see your kingdom reign, to see you basically dismantle the wicked one and begin to establish that new heaven, that new earth, begin to establish new life, that we may no longer be in bondage to the powers of sin, that our mortal bodies may be fully free Though we love God, oftentimes we don't do that which God desires us to do because we are battling with the flesh on a daily 
basis. So when God actually gives the enemy access to attack us and to find ways to arouse our sinful desires and passions, what the believer does is he or she will look up and say, Maranatha, Maranatha, O Lord, come, redeem me and establish your kingdom now. Because when your kingdom is established, all will be well, no more temptation, no more sickness, no more disease, no more destruction, no more death. Christ and Christ alone will reign supreme and that is our desire. And that desire is stirred up when the enemy is attacking us. And reason number five, God allows the enemy to attack us in order that we may rely upon one another. When the enemy is attacking a brother or sister in Christ, it gives us an opportunity to come alongside one another and begin to intercede for each other. And as we intercede for each other, we build each other up and we oppose the kingdom of darkness together. For two or three is greater than one trying to battle and trying to fight and trying to resist the enemy in his or her own strength. So oftentimes God will allow us to see what the enemy is actually doing within the lives of believers, brothers and sisters around us so that it may give us a ministry to come alongside each other and see each other revived, strengthened, empowered, and together we oppose the kingdom of darkness. So oftentimes that's what God desires, that you and I don't try to win this battle alone. Luke chapter 22 verses 31 to 32 says this, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. So this is God's desire. As I mentioned, that we may pray alongside one another in order to empower each other so that when the weaker brother or sister is empowered, they may begin to empower others who need to be empowered. So once again, that's it. That's all I got for y'all. That's my five reasons why God allows the enemy to attack us. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to Aim High with Mike and Emma. And don't forget to check out the rest of the videos that we have on this series, Know Your Enemy. It was a pleasure sharing these truths with you all. Until next time, you already know, it's all love. Peace.